but within a quarter mile in any direction, you literally had more nuclear military power, nuclear submarines, ballistic submarines, attack submarines, two or three aircraft carriers, destroyers, Ali Burke class destroyers, etc., etc. So that kind of paints the picture of kind of where I was surrounded by, but it was in the military installation area, to, to be sure. Yeah, where, where do you live about? Uh, I live in Virginia. You live in Virginia? Carl, yes. And uh, we hear that you had a major sighting, at least one? Yes. Or? Well, two, but the first one uh, was very far away, and it looked like a meteor okay. uh, until it slowed down and made a, a long, slow, sleeping curve. So you're not really certain about that one? Oh, it wasn't, it wasn't an aircraft. Okay. It wasn't a, a spacecraft. It wasn't a satellite. Okay. Uh, I don't know what it was. Okay. Uh, but you had a major sighting. Major sighting in 1997. Yeah. This was uh, March 12, 1997 at 9.08 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in Norfolk, Virginia. And uh, this was the, I would find out later, the night before the Phoenix Lights. Okay. Uh, and. Um, I basically saw a 800 foot wide, well, I say 800 foot wide, 600 to 800 foot wide. Uh, to give you some idea of what that is, that's three 747s wingtip to wingtip side by side. Okay, well, that's, that's huge. That's, yeah. <laughs> and how far away was it? Uh, initially, when it started, and this is all in the DVD, yeah. but it, it, when it started, it passed in front of the three stars of Orion's belt and it blinked out each light individual. There were no lights on the boomerang shaped craft at all. Okay. None. Um, and uh, like I said, I was in the Civil Air Patrol, and I knew that we were in a strict airspace, like I told you about the military base. Yeah. Uh, and uh, TCA, you know, restricted, restricted space like that, you, you have to have what's, well, even if you're not in that, you have to have what's called anti-collision lights on, okay, FAA regulations. If you don't have your anti-collision lights on, you could be, you know, seriously penalized. You may even lose your license, you know, at the discretion of the FAA. It's pretty reckless, uh, and you, you, you really get reprimanded, especially if you're in, in a terminal control area, and, and you're in a restricted military control mm -hmm, area mm -hmm. with military, you know, ballistic submarine, nuclear, et cetera, et cetera. So it caught my attention. And as it passed in front of the three stars of Orion's belt, it, it blinked each one out individually as it passed in front of each one sequentially. And I was like, well, what the hell is that? It doesn't have anti-collision lights on. And uh, I really thought that it, because it was so far away and didn't have lights on, that it had to be a hang glider because of the shape. Okay, it was probably 5,000 feet, 6,000 feet up, which is pretty high. Um, and uh, within, no sooner did I think that it was a hang glider, maybe a mock takedown by the SEALs of, mm -hmm. uh, of, of the base, which they could train for, definitely train for, um, it dropped in altitude. But when it dropped, it didn't, a plane will do this, okay? A helicopter can do this, okay? A balloon can do this, okay? This object rotated on its own axis, okay? On its central point axis and dropped that five or 6,000 feet or whatever it was in about two and a half seconds, three seconds maybe. That's amazing. Yes. Now, if you know anything about physics, okay, you've broken the speed of the sound limit. Okay, so if you travel that fast, even half that 5,000 feet in three seconds, okay, you will break the sound barrier many times over. Not a sound. Completely silent craft. Complete, well, there was a hum okay. when it was closest to me, probably 100, 100 150 feet away. Okay, that's close. It was subsonic. It, you could feel it. You, you know what I mean? You could feel it. And it was a wow. People laugh when I do that. But yeah. That's what it sounded like. If you saw the opening parts of Star Wars, well, I hate to use this as an yeah. analogy because then it sounded like that. Wah, 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 wah. I forget which one it was. Uh, the fourth one, I believe. Okay. That is really what it sounded like, and you really felt it. It was a subsonic. Um, had something to do with the propulsion system. That's all I can think of. Uh, so anyway, it dropped, did the rotation thing, it dropped to treetop level and I lost it because it was actually so low, it was behind the house that I was in front of me. And then it slowly went like this, about 30, 35 miles an hour, okay? And as it got to my perpendicular point, okay, so I'd seen it from below, which I could see a boomerang shape. Now it was at my 90 degree point, okay, so I could see it from its side. And at that point, I realized it wasn't a B-2, it wasn't a hang glider, and I didn't know what the hell it was. And I was in shock. I couldn't move. Okay? okay. 
Uh, you, you mentioned you, you tried to throw a rock at it at once. Or no, 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 no. no I, it was, it was, it's a term we use in America. So oh. close you could oh. throw a rock oh, at Oh, so close it. you could throw a rock. Okay. <laughs> so close. Like, oh, okay. no. I was paranoid. I did okay. not move. I didn't move a muscle. Okay. okay. When it when it was at the perpendicular point. And another interesting, and these are just little details, but they're little details that are important because they corroborate with some of the other witnesses that I found out about six months later in Phoenix, who also saw boomerang shaped objects of immense size mm. on the very next evening. That's how I got involved with the Phoenix Lights investigation, so I could corroborate the, the, the yeah. similarities between the two cases. So um, as it passed across the 90 degree mark, I could see that its leading edge, the leading edge of any aerofoil has to have what's called uh, a Bernoulli principle. You have to have laminar flow. It was completely square. Hmm. That's not really aerodynamic, is it? Okay, and I told you I was accepted every real aeronautical university. And fly. I wanted to be a pilot. I wanted to be a Navy pilot. Um, it didn't work out. Long story short, but um, at that point, I mean, it was just—I was in shock. You understand? I, I was in—I I flew in the Civil Air Patrol with, with with pilots on search and rescue missions, and um, you know, you're with pilots. Some of these guys had thirty or forty thousand hours of flight time, which is just unbelievable amount of time. And you get military pilots today who might have 12, 1,500, 2,000 hours. That's, that's a lot of time in a jet, right? These guys had 20, 30, 40,000 hours. Never. And if you're in a, if, you're in a uh, if you've ever been in a small plane, it's about this big. It's smaller than a Honda, okay? And um, never once did, did anything about UFOs ever come up. You know what I mean? And to experience what I experienced and to see what I saw and knowing what I knew about you know, aerodynamic principles and physics, and you know, I went to college for mechanical engineering. So I had at least a pretty good idea of what was probably out there. And it was just unbelievable. I mean, it was just unbelievable. I actually, at its closest point when it was perpendicular, that's when it was closest to me, it, uh, it yawed. Okay, yaw on a plane is when you put the rudder on, okay? And so it kind of made a little slight collection, uh, correction. It yawed to the right, and it sort of lifted the the left wing a little bit as it did that. And then it corrected by move your arm to the right a little bit. Now, it didn't have any rudder surfaces. It didn't have any control surfaces. I don't want, I'm just trying to give you some idea of its motion. Other than that little correction, I mean, it was like it was, like it was a video display. Not in the sense that it wasn't real, but just in, 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 in the fluidity of its movement, OK? And it was just awe-inspiring. Mm. I was in shock. Do you think it was as big as the craft that was observed in Phoenix, the big V-shaped craft? The, here's the thing. Initially, when I made my initial report, I thought it was 800 feet wide. The reason why I thought it was 800 feet wide was because my judging of the distance was based on other objects that I knew the distance to. Many years later, I went back to the site, okay, and I took pictures. And what had happened is a new guy moved into that adjoining house and cut down this tree. And what I realized was that a street light that I thought was about 200 feet away was really 100 feet away. And that was the street light that illuminated the bottom and the front right leaning edge of the crowd. And that's how I saw the out outline and the contour of it. If, I, if, that, if the light wasn't there, I don't think I would have been able to make out too much detail. So what, I really, what you really look for is the big hole in the sky, really. 